Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. I um, am recording it on Friday morning and we usually try to record some point maybe midday or so Thursday, maybe a little earlier, but usually the market's already open when I'm recording on a Thursday, but we kind of have to do it around that time just for the timeline of our production cycle and things of that nature, getting it ready for posting on the website and all that type of stuff that has to happen. But we purposely pushed it up to Friday morning this week because of the very high risk, which by the way turned out to be uh, accurate, so I'm very glad. If I had recorded 24 hours ago, it would have been in the immediate aftermath of the 600 point drop on Wednesday, but then you got a 400 point recovery on Thursday and there's nothing, I can't control it all the time, but there, it really irritates me. When I record material, write material, we distribute things Friday that literally 24 hours went by and it became obsolete. And there's a certain reality of markets that that's gonna happen from time to time. But I sort of saw it coming this week, and I'm glad we, we kind of were able to adjust to that. But as I'm recording now, understand market's not yet open Friday, um, but futures are pointing to the Dow probably being down about 220 points. Um, but that's a little distortive because essentially you have Amazon and Google, obviously two gigantic companies in the S&P 500 and obviously in the NASDAQ that are in total free fall. In particular, Amazon is down about almost 10% uh, coming into the open, and it's been down 10% um, already the last couple weeks. So you very likely, it looks like, will end up with Amazon hitting bear market territory down 20% from its recent high. And I, and I don't have anything to say right now about Amazon. My point being this is kind of nature of the market, that really high growth, high valuation stuff is leading this way down. And, and it's pretty unrealistic to expect that other things wouldn't be coming down along with it as you get index fund selling and just sort of risk off selling and whatnot. But certainly there's a leadership sector. I keep looking up at the screens at the pre-market action. You, you get a, um, a replacement from, from higher risk stuff and the lower risk stuff that kind of ends up doing less badly, so to speak. That was the story this week. Uh, 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 at one point, we were down 600 points on Wednesday, and the stocks that were up, and generally down 600, you may not see anything up, right? But you saw pretty significant gains out of like Verizon and Procter Gamble and and uh, Walmart. Uh, yeah, there's a couple others I'm forgetting. Boeing, but big Dow blue chip names that were that are far you know, less exciting, less high growth, high PE ratio. So I am not saying anything about any of these stocks, good, bad, what have you. I'm making the point of, qual of, of flight to quality taking place in the equity markets now. And people have to kind of wonder if that continues, which would be my uh, expectation, but not that it would continue where those things go down a little and the other things go down a lot. It's more, I actually think that this will prove to end up being at whatever point, a rally into the value sector, which was already deeply undervalued in my opinion. Uh, some stuff deeply undervalued, some stuff modestly undervalued. I should be a little more precise. Um, and I think that you have to get a lot of the froth that's existed out there. Now you talk about the higher octane stuff in the market. This bloodbath in small cap this month has been a sight to behold. Small cap was up on the year roughly 10% uh, coming into late September, and right now is down on the year, five, six, seven percent I mean, you're, you're talking about beyond a correction and not quite yet a bear market, all within the last month. Very quick sell-off in the small cap space. Uh, of course, the emerging markets world has continued to get uh, hit hard. And it's been overall a flight out of risk assets. Um, and, and I think that what I've tried to do at Dividend Cafe this week on our, on our written version, and I owe it to you who only watch the video but don't read DividendCafe.com to give you a little explanation of what I think is going on, the underlying tension of markets. Because it's confusing investors when there's no catalyst. When you have a, a sell-off of about 15, 16, 1700 points in two weeks, uh, you know, think about this stat right now as people that understand the violence of the market sell-off in the last couple weeks. The market was at an all-time high 14 days ago, 14 trading days ago. Um, that's how far removed we are 
from uh, a completely different sentiment, completely different environment and emotional feeling around equities. Um, I will suggest that there probably is not a company you could name in the portfolio we manage at the Bonson Group, the, uh, the various portfolios we manage at the Bonson Group, uh, and maybe very few nationwide that actually in the last two weeks have had any kind of change or deterioration or alteration in their uh, fundamentals, in their operating performance, in their, in their balance sheet, and their expected cash flows. So what you've had in the last couple of weeks is a reasonably violent uh, change in sentiment, valuation. And yet US conditions are very good. We got a GDP print this morning that the economy grew about 3.6% in the third quarter. Uh, 3.5, 3.6%. They're expecting maybe 3.3 or 3.4. Even that was about double what we've been getting the last six, seven, eight years. Uh, and of course, that comes in the back of a 4.2% that we had last quarter. So you have a trending towards, we'll wait to see how Q4 does, but you, you could end up with a number on an annual basis uh, with a three in front of it. Uh, which a lot of people never thought we, we would thought we'd never see again. Economy's good. Corporate earnings are huge. Revenue growth is huge. So why is the stock market selling off? Uh, the rest of the world is in 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 a very different position, and and uh, this notion of things can be bad in Italy and they can be bad in China is not to do with the United States. It's somewhat untrue. There's some truth to it, depending on what you own, that can become validated through time and can even become opportunistic along the way. But the market right now is absorbing the reality of two things. Global conditions are not as strong as they were last year. And on the U.S. side, where things are strong, the monetary policy is working towards a normalization. So it's taking some of the backstop against these weakening global conditions away. The, the constant stimuli from low interest rates, excessively below the natural rate, and from balance sheet, meaning the Fed putting an awful lot of liquidity into the marketplace. As the Fed slowly seeks to, A, they've for a long period now stopped adding liquidity to the marketplace, but they're even taking some of it off by reducing their balance sheet at a slow, measured pace. So you have a, a path towards monetary tightening taking place at the same time global conditions are worsening, and it's creating a divergent effect that is unsustainable. And our interest rates go higher because our economic growth is good. And yet investors are having to wrestle with the tension between the rest of the world and where things are in the US. All the while, a reasonably excessive amount of credit is built up in the US. And what that unwind will look like as the Fed does this normalization is now being juxtaposed with the fact that earnings growth has been explosive. But you know, even if it stays very good, it will not likely stay at as good the level that it's been. And that gets put up against the reality of perhaps a China slowdown, the impact of this silly trade war and tariff issues going on, uh, so forth and so on. So I, I'm trying to paint the picture for you of the kind of stew that is being stirred. And I think it's reasonably rational that th these things are, are being contemplated. I don't think any of them are new. There's no new data point that has accelerated it. But I think right now markets are responding and there's been a hard time finding a kind of point of capitulation. Well, valuations have gotten a lot better. I don't see uh, earnings uh, uh, reversing. Earnings growth into 2019 may very well slow down, but earnings will continue to be growing in my estimation and in some places, meaningfully so. So overall, what do we do about this? Well, we don't think that we're underweight equities. We're not going to pour money into, into the stock market, but we are finding certain stocks that we think have gotten undervalued to a point where they're now attractive to come add new money into them. Um, we, we don't really see bonds as a great diversifier right now because we only have two ways to do that, we, we already have an exposure we're comfortable with in a defensive area of fixed income. 
your treasury bonds or for tax-free investors, uh, the municipal sector, municipal bonds. You have a certain kind of bonds that act like bonds that are out of waiting in our portfolio we're fine with. But they, if interest rates are climbing, they're not going to really make us money, but they're there to hedge out a lot of the risk that may be in a client portfolio. But more or less, the way to pe that people are trying to make money in bonds right now is with credit, and we, we don't want to add to that sort of um, macroeconomic risk piece into the portfolio. The levered loan, bank market, uh, uh, floating rate, uh, high yield credit, uh, even investment grade credit, you know, that has seen its embedded uh, aggregate credit quality substantially deteriorated. So I think across the risk uh, spectrum and fixed income, it's better to be de-risking, not re-risking. And that's not an interest rate comment. It's a credit market comment. So then what do you do to sort of diversify? You like where you're at with equities. You're, we already are a little tilted on the more defensive side. We're not excessively low, but we're just in a moderate weighting, perhaps a little uh, moderately conservative weighting on equity. And I think the alternative sector becomes a very attractive place right now to diversify some of that uh, bond and stock exposure. And we're looking to increase our weightings there, and we're very pleased with how our, our performance has played out there on the year. So that's our uh, position right now that, and our viewpoint on what's taking place in the markets. Um, people ask, when do you think the drop will stop? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't even dare to answer. I have no idea. Um, I, I don't believe that there is thousands of points of more downside, but I wouldn't rule anything out. I certainly think another thousand points is very possible. That wouldn't even take us to where we were back in spring of this year um, if it did happen. But um, there's, there's a continued tension point in the markets between the fact that uh, there is a tailwind of growing earnings. Um, there is a certain uh, area of the market that has not participated as much in recent upside. And I think that ends up catching a bid. But along the way, uh, the frothy overvalued stuff is probably going to have to kind of get repriced. And, and it's something we thought was going to happen for quite some time. It took a lot longer. If indeed this is that repricing, it's taken a lot longer than we would have expected. So I am going to leave it there. I've gone on long enough, but I do believe that you should know. If you're a client of ours, you have questions, you've got to reach out. We will talk to you through this entire thing. There's nothing we enjoy doing more than holding a client's hand and giving them a real important assessment of what's going on in their own portfolio and how the broader market circumstances affect them. Reach out if you're a client of ours. If you're not a client of ours, I certainly hope your advisor is doing the same. Thank you for watching this week's Dividend Cafe.